Just like its desktop counterparts, you can set up your document templates folder directly on your iPad and leverage your document templates immediately. In some ways, I think it's actually easier to set up. Let's begin. Now that this demo takes place on iPad, you can find the iPhone video by clicking the link above. And don't forget to like and subscribe to stay tuned into the channel. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and open up Scrivener. Now, every time you open up Scrivener on your iPad or iPhone, it's gonna ask you if you wanna sync, almost guaranteed every time. So let's go ahead and sync that. And depending on how many files need to be synced, this can take from a minute to a few seconds. So we'll just let it go through. Perfect, okay, so we're gonna go ahead and create a project. And for the sake of simplicity, we're just gonna call it a blank project because that's all you can really create on an iPad anyway. Okay, and in this case, we're gonna go ahead and save it on my iPad. Okay, so let's go ahead and get and create our template sheets folder. So we're gonna click our research folder here, tap it there, and then we're gonna go ahead and click the folder icon in the bottom left corner here. Okay, it'll give us an option to go ahead and give it a title and synopsis. I'm gonna go ahead and call it template sheets. Click add. There we go. Okay, now in order to turn this into the actual template sheets folder, we need to swipe to the left, click more, and then click the, the option that says set as template folder. And you'll notice as soon as I make this change, the icon right here is going to change that that template icon let's go ahead and do it and there we go once you've done that you know you have successfully set up the template sheets folder on your ipad now let's start out by creating our very first document template from scratch we're going to make a template for a chapter and a scene today now you might be wondering why on earth would i want to do that trust me by the end you'll wish you knew this tool from day one so we're going to go ahead and tap our template sheets folder to open it up and then we're gonna add a new folder and we're gonna call that folder chapter title. We'll click add. There we go. Now we're gonna open up that folder and we're gonna create a scene. And we're gonna add, use, instead of using the plus over here on the folder, we'll click the plus there to get our text. You can see it's already giving us the option to create from our template. We're not going to though. We're gonna go ahead and click text. And we're gonna call this a scene title. And we'll click add. There we go. Okay, now we have a scene title. You can see if you're on the iPad, you have this beautiful corkboard view as well. If we actually wanted to go inside that, we could just tap it and it would take us right into that scene there. Now what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna navigate back out of our template sheets folder here and go to our draft folder. We're actually gonna click it and go inside of it. If you want to, you can click this arrow here that'll actually take you inside here in the binder, okay? And then what we'll go ahead and do is we'll click our plus button from the bottom here. Now, if we click that, you can see we have a chapter title and we have a scene title. Now, chapter title, as we know, contains the scene title inside it, but we can choose either one to get started. The chapter title, of course, will also include our scene with it. So let's go ahead and do that right now. We're gonna click the chapter title. Going to go ahead and click add. Now we could actually give it a name and all that jazz, everything there to make that really nice and clear. But for now, for simplicity, we're gonna go ahead and just add it as it is. And you can see already we have a chapter title. We can see we have a corkboard view here. We could click that. It would take us to the scene, showing us the scene inside of it. And we can just also just click inside it to find that scene right there and click it. And so if, let's say we just wanted to add another scene, right? Inside this chapter, we could come here, do the same thing. Except for this time, instead of selecting the chapter title, we'll want to select that scene title. Once again, we'll go ahead and add that in. And there we go. Now we have two scenes stored inside a single chapter. And of course, we could set up our actual uh, Scrivener a template, right? That document template to include two scenes or more if we want to. Uh, it's totally up to you how you want to have that set up. If you have two or more scenes typically in a chapter, then that's a good thing to do. If you don't, you just have that one scene, that's fine too. Now, this is just the beginning of what we can do here. Um, you may have noticed that so far, all we kind of did was just create a, a folder with the scene inside of it 
and we just kind of copied those titles across. Now there's that's basics and that's a good thing to do and that makes it a little bit easier for us when we're creating a chapter, right? But there's more we can do here to make this an even more useful to, to us. So let's return to our templates folder and assign a label and a status to our template. Back to our research. We'll navigate to our template sheets and to actually get access to the inspector and change the elements of our chapter, we're gonna to wanna to click and hold that chapter folder, that chapter title folder there, and go ahead and assign it a label and a status. Now, labels can be used for a variety of different purposes, such as tracking character viewpoint. But today, we're just going to leave it as the default. So let's go ahead and open it up. We're gonna go ahead and click red, and we're gonna go ahead and assign a status too. We'll do that as to do. Okay, and once we're done with that, right, we're gonna go ahead and click done. Then we're going to go ahead inside of our chapter title here. Let's tap that, tap, press, and hold on that as well on our scene title there. That'll take us back in here. We, once again, we can select a label and a status. Okay. And then we can click done. Now, if we come back here to our draft folder, right? And we're going to go actually inside of it again. And we create a new chapter. Click add. Initially, it doesn't look like there's much different, right? So if we open it up, everything is looking essentially the same. But if we actually press and hold or click and hold here, we can have the option to see that we have a label and a status assigned here ready to go. You might be wondering, hey, well, there's no visible differences. How is this really going to be useful for me? Well, what we can do to make these, these changes more visible is that we can actually turn on some settings in our binder to make the changes more apparent. So what we'll do is in the bottom left corner here, we're gonna click our little gear icon. We're gonna select under options, binder. And then we're going to turn on show labels and show status. So we'll click that show labels, show status. And there we go. Now we're seeing it directly in our binder here. We have uh, we have one here that has no status. That was our first one, right? If we clicked it, it has no label, no status, nothing assigned to it. But the ones that do have a label, we can see the label on the edge there. And we can also see our status there too. And if we went inside here too, there we go. We see our label on the side and our to-do status right underneath it. Uh, super handy and makes that really clear and visible in the binder for us. Now, if we want to make this even more clear, if we want to see our labels to be really popping at us, we can actually go ahead and come back down here to our uh, settings, go back to binder, right? And we can go ahead and turn on tint rows with label color. And there you can see now, if we actually go inside it, we can see that very clearly now. It looks really, really nice. And of course, it'll look even more clear if we had tons of chapters and things going on in here. Another thing we can do too, is we can also take our sidebar here, which is essentially our binder, right? And we can expand it and make it bigger if we wanted to. Um, now you may or may not want to do this depending on how big your screen is. If you're using like the 12 point inch iPad Pro, it's not a bad option. If you're using the 11 inch or something smaller, then you might want to claim that space back. Uh, but of course, at any point, even if you want to get rid of this all together, you could just click this little arrow, two arrows here in, in the editor, and that'll kind of take that out of there. And you could just focus on your page on the thing that you're actually working on. Now you may have noticed that we had one more option in our binder options. So let's go ahead and add a synopsis to our chapter and scene. Uh, I typically like to use this to ask some sort of critical question that gets my mind working. Uh, so that when I jump into writing, creating a chapter or writing a novel, I already have something to like springboard me into getting my writing done. So let's navigate back to our templates folder here. Research, template sheets, there we go. And let's tap and hold the folder and let's add a synopsis. So in this case, we we'll wanna add in what is happening in this chapter. Now, obviously you could ask a way better question than that. So whatever you decide, just make it sure it's something that works for you. And I could even come in here and add some notes if I wanted to. Write document notes here, click done. And those would all be carried over. So let's go ahead and click done here. And let's go ahead and go inside our scene too and do the same thing. Let's press and hold, okay. And let's go ahead and type in what happens in 
this scene, right? And then we'll say write scene notes here. And I probably should have written in the last one, write chapter notes here, right? But let's go ahead and just work with me here. Click done. Now let's go back to our draft folder here. Once again, we're clicking the draft folder. We can click this arrow to actually go inside of it here. And then let's go ahead and add that in now. So we go to our plus icon in the bottom right corner. We click the chapter title to get that whole chapter. You can see our synopsis is already in there, which is great. Add that in. Now it's not showing up in the binder, but we could add that in by coming down to our settings here and going to binder and going show synopsis synopses, right? And there we go. We can see that now. And there it is there as well. Now, while our notes aren't visible here in the binder, if we clicked and hold this, you can see the notes are in fact there and it was carried over. And to be honest, you probably wouldn't want those notes showing up in the binder anyway. We just, after some point, it would get way too much. In fact, oftentimes I, I'll, I'll find myself turning these settings on and off. I'll, sometimes I'll be switching back to the compact. I'll go back to the expanded. You know, I'll be coming here and occasionally I'll fiddling around with these as the case may be, depending on what I actually need at any given moment. And thankfully, these settings are really easy to get to. They're right here in the bottom left corner all the time. You just find it, jump in, and get to work on it. Now, the last thing I want to show you is a real world example of document templates. So let's navigate to my project, the Otter and the Amulet, to see what it looks like on the iPad. So I'm going to close out of this blank project here. There we go. Here's the audio in the amulet. I'm going to go ahead and click that. Open that right up. Okay. You can see already we have lots of really good icons. I have a template sheets folder right there. Now, if we open that up, I have my save the cat log line, right? And what this allows me to do is to kind of work out my premise. Uh, typically, this is only something I need to do once per novel. So in this case, I have a series. So I do want to have a template for it so I can have a premise that I've worked on for, for each book in the series, right? And this comes from the Save the Cat uh, writes a novel by Jessica Brody, just a heads up there. So I have a little template here. I have a little example of how it's done and then instructions on how to get started on my own, right? And if I were to click... Uh, down here for my plus button, you'll see in a second how all these things kind of show up. And it can be a bit overwhelming on the iPad, but it still works really, really well. Let's move down here. We can see here I have uh, my customized uh, character sketches for creating my story worthy hero. I have an AB character sketch for kind of smaller side characters. I still have my setting sketch, which really hasn't changed too much, but that's something that's coming in the future. That's something I really want to work on and I will get to. I have a daily targets option that allows me to create daily target scene with each label and status already assigned to. It. Um, it continues on down to all the chapters. You can see we have our labels turned on. So we can see very clearly this is Ned's chapter. This is Revelo's chapter, Nero, Ivo, multi point viewpoints. So this is if I had multiple viewpoints of different characters with different scenes inside the chapter. And you can see how, oh, wow, that looks really, really nice. And let's go ahead and expand the binder too. We can see that really, really well. Okay. Yeah, it looks really, really clear and nice. If I click those, you can see the scenes inside of it. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I love that. I love how labels look on the iPad. They just stand out and it's really clear to tell what is what. I have my book template that allows me to, to create a book from scratch using the three act format. And I also have just a blank chapter with no labels assigned to it in case I come up with another viewpoint or something that I need to add in on the go. And of course, I have more that I could go into here. And finally, what I want to show you is what it looks like when I actually go ahead and add these in to my project. So let's go ahead and go back here. Um, let's actually go into uh, this one right here. Let's go ahead and add another book here. So I'm going to go ahead and click the plus icon here and see, oh, there they all are. Now there's a lot, like I said, this can be a bit overwhelming if you don't really know what you're looking at. I'm really familiar with this project, so it's really easy for me to go through this and see what is what. And you can see they're all in sequentially from top to bottom. You saw that we started with the Save the Cat log line, then went all the way down to our book premise exercise. Now in this case, I just wanted to do a book, right? So here's book X. I can tell these guys are what was inside of it. So I'm gonna click book X. And it has a, all set up the synopsis, everything ready to go for me. I'll go ahead and click add. There it is. There's book X. And then I could actually come into book X here, right? And select act one. I could come in here and I could start adding in chapters. So I could go with, here's a Ned chapter. And add that in. 
There he is. I could go ahead and add it in a Revelo chapter. Maybe I'll just add one of each real quick so you can see this. You can see we also have an icon set up for these two. That's something I haven't covered in any of these videos, but icons can definitely be added to, uh, temp to document templates. We'll go ahead and click add again, all the way down through to Nira. and Ivel. And there we go. You can see the one that's selected is the one that's kind of grayed out, but otherwise I think it looks really, really, really nice. Love it. So hopefully this gives you some amazing ideas on how to leverage this powerful tool. This is the extent of what document templates can do in iPad or iPhone, but Scrivener's desktop counterparts can take this e tool even further. If you'd like to see how it's done on a Mac or PC, be sure to check out these videos in the series. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching fellow writers. Be sure to check out the rest of this video series for more great tips on how to leverage document templates. And if you're new to Scrivener or just need a refresher on how to use its many features, I have a lot of free resources available for you. Head over to my channel page to find more content focused on turning writers into authors. And if you're eager for more, sign up for my newsletter. You'll find the link on my channel page. Don't wait. Start your writing adventure today by subscribing to my channel. It's never too late to get started. Thanks for watching. Happy writing.